Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss the differences between a $30 shirt and a $300 shirt and how you can distinguish a low-end from a high-end shirt so you don't buy crap. <laughs> Basically, this is not just about a particular number. I'd say that anything under $50 for a dress shirt is low end, between $50 and $150 or $200 is medium range, and then $200 to $600 is a luxury range. In this video, we'll discuss the construction and the details that help you to identify a shirt so you know what you're getting without overpaying. So, first of all, whenever you buy a shirt, it's important to understand the difference between a bespoke shirt, a made-to-measure shirt, and a ready-to-wear shirt. Bespoke means the shirt is made for you based on a pattern by one person for you. Made to measure means an existing pattern is modified and ready to wear means just off the rack. To learn more about the differences and the terminology, please check out this in-depth video here. The first thing to look at when you want to distinguish a good shirt from a bad one is how the patterns were matched. Now, if you have a solid shirt, you can do that, but if you have a checked shirt like the one I'm wearing here, you can do that perfectly. First of all, if the pattern is matched on the sleeve and the shoulder on both sides, you know it's a quality shirt because someone paid attention to it and they went to the lengths to match the pattern. Therefore, you can assume that the rest of the shirt is also of a higher standard. Other areas you want your shirts to match is the front placket, especially if you have an American or classic placket. Another area could be the yoke in the back. If all these areas are matched, you know it's likely a high quality shirt. Now, on the other hand, you can not see pattern matching and still get a quite decent shirt, but it's just easy to identify a shirt as being a high-end shirt if it pattern matches. The next hallmark to look at is stitching. A lower-end shirt has about three to four stitches per centimeter, whereas a higher-end shirt will have about eight stitches per centimeter. So the higher the stitch density, the higher the quality of the shirt overall. The only time a high stitch density is not desirable is on a very airy, lightweight, open weave summer fabric, because then the high stitch density can actually destroy the fabric. Also, you want to look for consistency of the stitching. The best way to look at the stitching is at the bottom hem where it's round. If you see a consistent distance from the edge and it's all very neat, chances are the rest of the shirt is also neatly stitched and of good quality. If you see wavy lines or varying stitch densities, you know that the sewer was maybe not an expert. A quality shirt will always have a single needle stitching, which takes a little more time, but it creates a cleaner look. On the other hand, a low-end shirt will have double needle stitching, which means you can see two rows of visible stitching, and because of the different material of the fabric and the yarn, you will end up with puckering after a few times in the wash. That looks not quite as nice, and it's a hallmark of a low-end shirt. Next up, you should look at the collar and the cuffs. It goes without saying that you want to choose a collar that flatters your face. So if you have an oval face, go with something spread. If you have a wide face, go with something less spread, more classic. To learn more about this stuff, check out our shirt style video here. A lower end shirt will typically have a very stiff interlining in the collar, and it just comes in one levels of stiffness. On the other hand, a higher-end shirt will either give you the option to go with a softer interlining or something stiffer, and the interlining will also be of higher quality. So even if it's stiffer, it just feels more comfortable on your skin. On top of that, you can find shirts that are completely unlined. There's no interlining in there, nothing is glued, and it takes more time and is more expensive to produce. Therefore, it's not done on lower-end shirts. So if you have a soft, collar and you can easily move the inside fabric and the outside fabric freely, it means it's an unfused collar and it is of a higher quality. Now, you can also have high quality fused collars, but you just won't find an unfused collar in a low-end $30 shirt. Personally, for most dress shirts, I prefer a higher-end interlining because it just provides a crisper look without compromising comfort. For a more casual shirt, I go with an unlined construction. 
The unlined ones are a little more tricky to iron, so if you're not quite comfortable with ironing, skip the unfused collars and cuffs because they're gonna be a pain in the ass. Next up, you should look at the yoke of a shirt, which is that back part here over the shoulders. Traditionally, they were split in half in the middle because people usually have one shoulder that is more sloped than the other, and they use that part to correct that. Today, most factory-made shirts and even made-to-measure shirts don't even take that into consideration anymore. So all you can look at is, is the yoke split in the back? If so, it's another step, it's more expensive, it helps to match the pattern on the sleeve, and that's basically all it is. If you have it, it's a sign that somebody at least put some thought into it, and it's more likely to be a higher quality shirt. Next up, look at the buttons. A $30 shirt will likely have plastic buttons, and they are sometimes made to look like mother of pearl, but they're not. So how can you determine whether something is plastic or real mother of pearl? There are actually a couple of ways. First, you can touch the button with something metal, such as an iron or a key, and it will make a special sound, such like this. On a plastic button, it will sound like this. Now, if that's indiscernible to you, ideally, you touch it with your teeth. It will make a much more metallic sound with the Mother of Pearl button. An even better way to determine it is to simply Use your tongue and touch the button. If it's cold, you know it's a mother of pearl button. If it's not cold, you know it's a plastic button. You may be the weird guy licking buttons at the store, but at least you know that you have a quality shirt. Mother of pearl buttons are the standard for medium and higher end shirts. And if you see that, chances are it's of good quality. For casual shirts, you can sometimes also find Corozo buttons or horn buttons, that's okay too, but for dress shirt, Mother of Pearl is a standard. The next detail to look at is how the button is actually sewn on to the shirt. A quality shirt has a little shank around the base, which creates a little more space, so when you button your shirt, especially in the front, there is no puckering and no pleating around the buttonhole, and it just looks neat. On the other hand, a cheaper way to sew on a button is fully by machine without a so-called escalite thread and you will not see a shank and the button is more likely to come off and you'll see some puckering. A Swiss company called Ascolite came up with the idea to create a button that creates the shank but you can sew it on by machine and the button will never come off under normal wear. Personally, I've seen how it works, it's wonderful and it really works. You don't get the puckering, the button stays on, and it's simply marvelous. If you get a bespoke shirt, oftentimes they sew on the button by hand, which is fine too, but if you can find Ascolite threads, that's great, and usually it's advertised on a shirt, but not always. You can also look at the sleeves of shirts, because most of the time, relatively inexpensive shirts or low-end shirts have huge armholes, and that makes them uncomfortable to wear, because as soon as you lift your arms, everything moves up and becomes uncomfortable. On the other hand, a higher-end shirt usually has a smaller armhole because somebody thought about the cut and the design when they made the shirts. With lower-end shirts, the only goal is to create a size that fits as many people as possible. Another quality hallmark is the buttonholes. If you have a machine buttonhole that was first sewn and then cut, you have fraying edges on the inside and it just looks bad. On the other hand, a high-quality machine sewn buttonhole has a very high stitch density and you do not find fraying threads. Now, the creme de la creme of shirts is a hand-stitched buttonhole. And you can tell it's hand-stitched by its slight irregularity, but it's raised sometimes and it's simply a beautiful work of art. Because it takes a lot of time and it's very expensive, you only find those at the very high-end shirts. So if you find a shirt with handmade buttonholes, you know the rest is gonna be good and high quality. Sometimes people say that the little gussets, which are the little triangles or parts in between your side seams are a hallmark of quality. I found they're not really because you can find very expensive shirts for $600 that don't have them, as well as very low-end shirts that don't have them. Usually you'll find them in the mid-range of around $150 to $200. If you enjoyed this video, please sign up to our newsletter so you get videos like this right here in box. Thank you. Thank you.